Welcome back to the Breaking Bitcoin Show. We are live every evening at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, your evening source for everything markets and finance. I'm your host, Justin Wise, lead analyst and senior mentor at Cracking Cryptocurrency. We've got a fantastic show for you guys this evening. I hope you guys are all doing well wherever you happen to be tuning in from, whether that's YouTube, Twitch, DLive, Facebook Live, or on Roku with the Investor News Channel app. If you're watching on, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, that is. Make sure to smash the like button, and you will also enjoy following us on Instagram or Twitter, where we do post exclusive content you will not see anywhere else. All right, brief announcements. This is your last chance, guys. This is your last chance to register for our... Boom, let me get it over here. Your last chance to register for our four-week trading competition. Bitcoin trading competition. One group, one month, five winners, and lots of fun. Registration is live for the next eight hours at bybitreg.crackingcryptocurrency.com. That's bybitreg.crackingcryptocurrency.com. No purchase necessary. Minimum balance of 0.05 BTC required. If you haven't signed up, there is a link in the description. Bybit is offering a $90 sign up bonus. All right. Big news of the day. Big news of the day. Well, all the weekend news was absolutely wrong. President Trump extending the social distancing guidelines to April 30th did not have the catastrophic effect on the markets that everyone thought that it would. If you would have read any news article from last night, you would have you would have known you would have absolutely known going to bed last night that you were going to wake up to another Black Monday. In fact, the exact opposite happened in the markets, echoing much more closely to my sentiments going back to my original prediction following the Fed's monetary injection. We go back a few, just a few weeks in time. We talked about March 18th, the Fed injecting capital or lowering interest rates even more. I'd expect to see a market recovery. Now, <clears throat> it's always weird to see it happen, but futures started pumping right out of the gate following market open last night, and that's carried through into today. Although the Russell is getting a little beat up, the SPY and the Q keep pushing higher, pushing the major indices back into even bullish territory on the daily even. And the story only gets deeper from here, so let's break it down to size with today's episode of Breaking Bitcoin. Hi, my name is Jude Nelson. I'm an engineering partner at Blockstack, and you're watching Breaking Bitcoin. All right, here we are in the live scene. We've got a lot to talk about, guys. A lot to talk about. So let's keep on it. Uh, first thing we want to talk about today. <clears throat> All right, let's go over to the futures. Let's look at the ES. Uh, you know, a little bit of a fake out here on the lower time frames, right? And if we pay very close attention, we can see that Minx was warning us, right? We can see that Minx was warning us on this rally to the upside. We've had, this is the 15 minute chart on the ES forward contracts, the S&P mini 500. Thank you so much, Paul, Bob, the builder, that CC shirt looking fresh though. Got to keep them ironed, man. Got to keep them ironed. All right. So uh, anyways, Minx warning us on this move to the upside, we can see now uh, triple bearish divergence coming in from Minx, as well as multiple short signals. I do have Minx uh, set to the smooth settings with reversal signals plotted only as I'm here on the LTFs. Now, um, so be careful, watch for a pullback on the ES moving into the late night hours here. Now moving up to the four hour, really no different here. If we look, we do have a potential breakout that's forming here on the four hour time frame. But of course, Minx is warning us with some potential bearish divergence here, getting a little bit of get a, getting kind of weak as we move up, which, if confirmed, has the potential to push us back down to the 2440s at least. So be careful. Watch for that. However, that needs to be cloaked kind of overall and what's going on on the daily over here. Now, I do have Minx slightly different on the chart from the way that you guys are used to using it. So don't worry. We're just going to be talking about Wada Atar explosion, the breaking Bitcoin indicator, which is coming up right now. The baseline, of course, which you all know and utilize, and Parallax, which, of course, all the premium members have access to. In this instance, breaking Bitcoin acting as my initiator, Parallax as my confirmer, and Watatar explosion as my volatility filter. Okay, I also have the continuation filter on there for re-entries, and then I, of course, have the entry qualifier, uh, Minx acting as an exit indicator in this sense, actually. All right, so... Uh, in this sense, actually, what's what's interesting, and this is what's great about just having a system, right? We can see that 
Where did yesterday close on the SPY? Where did yesterday close on the E-mini futures? Uh, below the qualifying level, just enough below. Uh, with uh, Now, on the SPY, actually, we did get Parallax confirmation on the daily uh, coming in today on the E-minis. Uh, so definitely a spot trade there, not necessarily on the E-mini futures. Again, one kid. Uh, it's it's always my my habit to just trade each individual chart, which means if I don't get the signal on the actual chart, regardless of whether it's a different contract, I trade it elsewhere. Some people may think that's archaic, but it just works and it is what it is. Uh, so anyways, uh, formation, excuse me. Uh, so definitely bullish trending signals here on the daily as we have broken back above the baseline on the daily here for the SPY minis. Uh, and Parallax giving us the confirmation and water tar explosion flipping bullish as well, which is what's really nice about this. Now, if we were to go back to the regular minks, if we were to unsmooth it out, we would be long there as well. You guys can all consult that on your own charts. Uh, over on the NQ is really no different. Let's take a look at the NQ. Again, here on the 15 minute, we are gets, getting some warnings with minks telling us to be very careful of this range as we kind of uh, as we kind of just drift lazily to the upside here. Not drift lazily, but but not not charging, definitely not charging. I wouldn't say charging, uh, but with minks flashing us multiple short signals. This is our third uh, potential sign of bearish divergence <clears throat> uh, up on the four hour. Really no different, kind of the same thing as the SPY over there as we kind of look to crest and break above this previous high as we are seeming to form a lower high on minks. We do need confirmation on this, but if this is confirmed, the NQs could be pushed back down to the 7400s. However, operating in that kind of same guise as the daily, as we are breaking above our important levels here and getting some bullish signals here on the daily overall. So again, a confirmation on the NQs actually came over here on this down candle, putting one in for a fantastic trade to the upside. Of course, candle opened up. One would have gotten the, gotten the long signal right at candle close come Friday evening, maybe held that trade open over the weekend or took it on Monday open, uh, come market open on Sunday. Uh, but anyways, very similar to Bitcoin. Uh, we'll talk about that here in just a little bit because Bitcoin gave almost the same identical signal with bottom feeder, of course, uh, closing the daily out on uh, Sunday, uh, bullish. So a little bit different here, uh, but the last possible day you could have traded the NQs last week, Friday, or excuse me, Friday, uh, you would have gotten that confirmed long signal with water tar explosion, baseline, and parallax confirmation, setting it up for a very nice trade. A little too late for entry here now. So again, I think overall the four hour and the 15 minute are trying to tell us something that one who is a little bit more patient is going to see that pullback back down into the buy zone below the qualifying line here, below 77.68 with the baseline resting at 72.85. So about a $400 buy zone right there for looking to take the NQ long. I think this is not the right time waiting for that entry zone pullback is going to be the better thing. And I think that's exactly what the four hour with its with the bearish divergence and what the 15 hour with the bearish divergence are attempting to warn us about. All right. As I said, the Russell getting beaten up. So we'll just kind of skip the Russell, but we will go uh, to the Dow Jones mini futures. All right. Uh, starting off on the 15 minute chart here. Uh, that's not what we want. We want PTP system one. All right. All right, we can see a very similar thing coming in here. Minx giving us some triple bearish divergence. Here's our first top. Here's our lower high on Minx. Here is our second potential lower high. So it's going to be our second potential bearish div on the lower time frames for the Dow Jones minis. I think they're all trying to tell us something that we are going to see a bit of a pullback here moving into the evening hours. Same thing on the four hour. We are attempting to crest this previous high. Dow, the weakest of the two pairs between the SPY and the NASDAQ, not making it quite as high. And again, seeming to form a lower high here. Again, we need another eight hours for that to confirm. We actually do need to roll over here. If we do end up rolling over again, I'd expect to see price right around 21,000, maybe 20,800 is a possibility as well. And of course, we need to cloak that in the overall bias here to the upside, uh, because as the Dow closes above the baseline, uh, and let's get our, yeah, closes above the baseline, above the qualifying line, just getting very similar to the SPY, uh, to the to the S&P minis here, getting that parallax confirmation just on the current candle, letting us know that we're just a little too overextended and being above the qualifying line lets us know that very well, that what we need to do here is wait for a pullback, wait till price comes down into our buy zone. Payday, thank you so much for the 200 bits, my brother. And Lord Calder, thank you so much for the follow over there on Twitch. You guys are kings. 
All right, so yeah, definitely uh, the same with the SPY, the same with the NQ, and the same with the Dow. Uh, bullish bias to the uh, bullish bias certainly, uh, but the four hour and the fifteen minute are kind of warning us of a pullback, which is great. Back into this entry zone, uh, it'd be really tight if we came down to the qualifying zone here on the Dow twenty one thousand one hundred and twenty two uh, between twenty one six eighty three, which is where the qualifying zone is. So a nice, you know, a, a right around a three hundred dollar range, which would be really optimal. Uh, for a Dow long. So again, setting limit orders or waiting for price to come back down and giving you that objective long signal. You just need to be in the entry zone for this to be a qualified trade. Uh, but overall, again, traditional markets heating up and looking positive to the upside. Now looking at gold spot, uh, let's take a look at gold spot here. Gold spot, probably the most interesting. Uh, and again, as somebody who took a long on gold spot, why? Uh, because we finally got that nice confirmation that we wanted to see. Okay, we finally got that nice confirmation that we wanted to see. Now, again, that we do have a few negative things here with waning water tar explosion. If the daily closes as it is today, this is actually an exit signal. So I took the I took the long trade on the close of yesterday's candle or today's daily candle. Uh, we have a fresh daily candle now, but I did actually uh, end up going long on gold spot why we're above the baseline we currently have a pullback testing the continuation filter if the chart looks like this at tomorrow's close we'll be exiting this trade but if we get this nice bounce off the zone between the continuation filter and the baseline then it'll just be a little bit of drawdown while we wait for the successful completion of our trade because we do see parallax confirmation water tar explosion confirmation and even minx confirmation with the smoothed out setting so this is actually real nice to see in that beautiful buy zone between the baseline and the qualifier so optimal place for entry we'll wait and see if this one's a winner or a loser. Overall, gold is definitely signaling bullish, uh, but we want to wait and see what the exit signal looks like on today's daily close. Silver as well. Silver in a similar situation, but without parallax confirmation. Uh, so let's get this pulled up. All right, as we can see, uh, silver has been a little bit more tepid than gold. It's been ranging right around the baseline and again in that buy zone as well. But Parallax has been far more contrite, not moving up and giving us that confirmation that we want. So we're just kind of hanging out, hovering. Keep in mind, as you can see here, we haven't cracked the breaking Bitcoin initiator either. So we're not even getting the initial long signal do, to do anything with silver. In fact, if we close below the baseline here, which is currently sitting at 1384, if we close below that baseline, uh, then we would even be biased to be looking for a short trade with Parallax bearish uh, and with, um, excuse me, with Parallax bearish and with Minx bearish still, uh, and with the breaking Bitcoin initiator still bearish. And we actually don't need Wada Atar explosion confirmation because we'll actually be getting a continuation signal out of this formation and out of this setup. So we could ignore Wada for the purposes of continuation. Uh, for a silver short, uh, which will be interesting. So we'll take a losing trade on gold. If that plays out, I assume that's how it would play out and then get an optimal entry for a silver short, which will be just fine. All right. Um, all right. We went over to the ES, the NQ, the Dow Jones, the gold and silver. Uh, let's go ahead and get over to our main cryptocurrencies looking at Bitcoin. Interesting day for Bitcoin. You know, it, it, it kind of it's kind of weird to me. A lot of people were confused. A lot of people were were confused that Bitcoin pump today. It seems a lot of people shorted the bottom, which they certainly should not have done so. Uh, let's be very clear about this. Nobody should be really looking to short Bitcoin until we close below the daily baseline. All right, so let's get uh, let's get our system up here and get a good eye on actually what's going on. All right, so what I'm going to have to do here, just one second, is refresh. All right, so here we are over on the Bybit chart. Let's get that back up there now. Here we go, PTP system one. Uh, yeah, so we did get an exit signal for at-risk shorts. Certainly did get that here with the breaking Bitcoin exit signal. And then with the Minx exits actually coming in a day later. Now, one thing that did happen on yesterday's daily close, uh, excuse me, so Sunday evening's daily close was bottom feeder. Bottom feeder strikes again, giving you that nice long signal up to 6460. Um, so, uh, you know, th there it is right there. In fact, if we use bar replay, let's use bar replay here and just go back to, to that, uh, that, that signal right there. All right, so there it is on the daily close. We got the bottom feeder signal telling you to take price up to 64.60 and boom, and there it is, all right? So uh, I don't feel, uh, I don't feel that any, now, if we look at what Parallax is doing on the daily, Parallax is not quite there. Uh, so I don't see at risk long. So I think that people who jumped into the short on Sunday, which they certainly should not have done, uh, just as I feel that people who are uh, jumping into a long at this point, I think are a little 
uh, I think are, are a little wrong. Uh, if Parallax goes ahead and gives us the bullish confirmation here, then I'll be looking to take at-risk shorts. Until then, I still actually feel a little bit of sentiment to the downside. But, you know, the difference between, you know, trading on that instinct uh, and taking objective signals is the difference between, you know, a winning trade and a losing trade, right? Um, <clears throat> you know, there was certainly no reason to be shorting into this movement here, right? Uh, now, there is something to be said. I know that some guys are running systems where, for example, they are, uh, you know, they are shorting on, let's say, minx exit signals, right? Or on exit signals back down to the baseline. That's fine. That's a little bit of, you know, again, that's not really the trade setup that I like to take. That's trading against the dominant trend. But there's certainly something there, right? There is something to be said for, you know, if you're going to trade reversals, you know, you certainly want to short uh, you know, near the top, and you certainly want along near the bottom if you're going to trade reversals. You know, you don't really want to be taking reversal trades against the trend after we're three bars, uh, you know, down into the movement. That seems fairly silly to me. So definitely something to be watching out for, uh, you know, kind of go ahead and go, you know, don't feel bad if, if that was you, but you know, just, just, this is why we don't trade against the dominant trend. Okay. Uh, so here we are back up above the continuation filter, cracking and closing above 65.14 now uh, is going to be my signal to look for at-risk longs on Bitcoin. So not until then. So we'll be watching the daily close tomorrow to see if we're going to go ahead and break out of this range or if we're going to come back down and test our baseline around the 6,000 to 50. Actually, it's around 53.75 right now. So we could have a pretty significant correction in in, in store here uh, down to the daily baseline. And, and again, even potentially trend flipping. But right now, there's nothing for us telling us to take risk to the long side. I am still spot long on Bitcoin, back in profit now. Uh, on top of uh, increasing my Bitcoin stack, because I've taken a profitable trade of the upside now. And overall, this area has been been fairly calm and simple for me, right? Didn't take an at-risk long over here. Didn't take an at-risk short here. Took an at-risk long down here. Uh, I've been spot long since this area right here, which puts me back in the green now. So very calm, patient trading, guys. There's We got a lot of other markets to trade, a lot of other setups that are coming in. Forex is so exciting right now. I'm really loving trading Forex and ETFs and CFDs, which I'm trading now. And uh, well, I've been trading them for a while, but now we have support for those in the cracking cryptocurrency uh, premium signal uh, system, which is good. I'm really enjoying that. Uh, it's been a treat, man. It's been a treat. Uh, you know, trading this this these last couple of months have, have been a real treat, right? You know, I've made uh, one pretty I had one pretty bad trade, uh, you know, where I did not uh, where I did a few things incorrectly. Um, but other than that, it's been a real treat to trade the last few months. I mean, the volatility has been absolutely amazing. There are so many opportunities here, uh, but not if you're kind of jumping at every you know, kind of jumping at every shadow. You don't need to be doing that. There's plenty of good setups. So right here, for example, waiting for confirmation for a nice trending long or waiting patiently for the trend to flip and take the short to the downside, right? So 65.14, watch for a daily close above that and watch that parallax to see that confirmation come into the upside here. Shadow boxing, man. Ain't no needs for it. All right, down here on the 15 minute, let's see if we can find a scalp. Let's see if we can find a scalp. Just one scalp, one day, one trade, 15 minutes. 100x leverage. I'm just kidding. It's 25. 25. All right. Uh, all right. Minx did signal for a nice short trade right here on this candle, uh, giving you some nice profit to the downside here, giving you about a 1.31% movement here. Uh, Parallax has flipped bullish. What do we got here? Minx is actually signaling for a little bit of another short right here. Uh, beyond that, let's see here. Not too much. Not too much. Uh, let's see your Ming signal for another short here. Kind of got its face melted off and called for a long right here. This was the trade to take. Of course, we're to the, you know, we're, uh, uh, we're above the daily baseline. We're biased to the upside. And there's that long signal right there, right down at the bottom. And beautiful movement, beautiful movement. Uh, and the next short was again, calling the top fairly nicely, but again, little, little too. It seems like I should optimize this so we actually, you know, the new Minx, the new, the new Minx is more optimized and does actually give better better short signal, so or better long and short signal. So I'll be releasing that pretty soon. Again, TradingView has, still has this compilation issue that I'm working on doing. I'm having to refactor the entire code base for the Minx upgrade. You know, had uh, had we not gone on worldwide lockdown uh, and TradingView hadn't decided to clamp down its servers like like bank accounts with credit right now, uh, then um, then then we wouldn't have any problems. But uh, but uh, well, we are. Uh, Zuhair Nakfi, thank you so much for the five Aussie. He asks, my views on weekly Fisher crosses under the zero line. Uh, tends to be a strong predictor of mid to long term. That's why I'm looking for shorts despite being above the baseline. Uh, I think the Fisher cross is a fantastic, uh, fantastic indicator. It is, uh, I, I know so many people who have come in and built their first PTP system 
with the Fisher transform uh, and, and Fisher Fisher transform zero line crosses, right? Uh, I've seen people take that a little bit more hardcore uh, and have different concepts and ideas and derivations of that. Uh, the, the concept that you're trying to figure out, you're trying to use a weekly baseline. Uh, so you're trying to do something like a three screens method, right? Where your weekly is determining your directional bias. Uh, and then you are looking for signals, either trending or reversal on a lower time frame. Uh, and that's fine. That's really not how uh, it's, it's not it's not a classic out of the box PTP system. Generally, PTP systems stick to one time frame and optimize everything to that time frame. Uh, but but it's certainly something that it's certainly something that I've I've seen people do and mentored people through. So uh, weekly baseline is fine for determining directional bias. Uh, you know, typically, though, what I'll find is that people will use the weekly to determine directional bias, and then they'll do a more classic looking for like daily oversold or overbought uh, territory to enter their trades from. Again, not really normally the thing, the, the way that we do things, but still uh, definitely opportunity there. So good, good choice. Fisher transform, one of my one of my favorite indicators, one of my favorite indicators of all time. Um, OK, uh, so Bitcoin here on the 15 minute time frame. Let's take a gander here. See if we can't get some trending. All right, so Bitcoin was running for the races. And what did we get? We got a little bit of bullish. Di yep, we got some bearish divergence here coming in on Minx and then a 15 minute short signal on the very next candle. We've got a retest of the baseline now. Uh, if I were to take a trade, listen, and again, bias to the long side, but if I were scalping this, I would most likely be looking for a rejection short with invalidation above the previous high. That's the setup that I would be looking for right here. Let's look at Rodrigo. And I'd be looking for, yep, so right above the previous high right there. And I'd be looking for a take profit cluster right from 64.44 to 63.58. All right. Uh, let's actually go on up to the four hour while we're here. Let's see what we got on the four hour. All right, four hour is bullish. Uh, we've got trending minx. We've got water tar explosion. Listing lazily to the downside, but still pushing up. Uh, no real divergence here on the four hour time frame. So again, overall, we don't look too bad. We're not really oversold. The last Minx short signal was right here. I guess a nice setup there. Uh, and we are just kind of coming off overextended, not really oversold, but a little bit overextended here on Minx on the four hour time frame. So again, uh, and even the Minx, uh, the, this is the optimized minx giving us this nice long signal on this candle right here. So let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Again, on the daily, as I said, things are fairly clear. Waiting for that daily close above 65.14 for confirmation to take a long to the upside. If not rejection, and I expect to see potentially 53.75. All right. Let's look at Ethereum here. What do we get from Ethereum here? A little bit, same thing, a little bit of bearish div and a pullback and a lower high so far. Let's see here. If I had to judge. Yeah, I would expect I would expect to see a bit of a sell off. Yeah, look at Minx coiling up here close to the OS. We could still see a push. I don't think that shorts are safe yet. We still could see a push up here. Still seems that most people are short. I don't really know if this has been sufficient to shake them out, but this does look like a little bit of distribution to me. On the lower time frames, I'd expect to see lower prices by this evening. Four hour is fairly neutral, bias to the upside. And again, the daily, same thing. I mean, look how weak Ethereum has been. On the daily, this certainly does look like accumulation, uh, but it depends on which way we break. Depends on which way we break, certainly.
All right, kind of the same scenario here. No parallax confirmation on the daily here for Ethereum. Uh, you know, Minx just winding its way up there, not in trending territory yet, but that's okay. With the smooth Minx, we don't necessarily need it trending. We're looking at the breaking Bitcoin initiator, and we are bullish on the daily for the breaking Bitcoin initiator. No parallax confirmation, so no reason to be going at risk leverage long. Uh, and what a confirmation we do have coming in. Uh, we're just getting to the point where we might be getting a rising explosion level. Look how tightly volatility has wound its way down. So whichever way we break, this is why I'm being patient, because whichever way we break, I do expect to see quite a bit of movement coming out of uh, coming out of um, Ethereum. Uh, we have wound, I mean, volatility is very, very tight right now. So I'm really looking forward to the explosive movement that comes. And it could come up, it could come down. I'm biased, obviously, to think that it's going to come up, but we can wait for confirmation because if we break to the upside, I expect to see some legs behind it. I expect to see some sustained movement. So again, four hour is fairly neutral right now, no clear signals. And on the on the lower time frames from the 15 to the 45, I actually would expect to see a pullback here going into the evening hours for Ethereum. All right. All right, so we covered the SPY, the NASDAQ, the E-mini Dow Jones. Uh, we covered gold and silver. We covered Bitcoin and Ethereum. Let's look at crypto bubbles. Let's see how the broader crypto market did today. So pretty good day uh, measured against the dollar for altcoins, again, largely because of BTC. Uh, however, let's look at things valued against BTC. Not so good. OK, so it was a good day. This means it was a good day to short altcoins. It was a good day to short altcoins. It was a good day to long Bitcoin. Uh, big movers of the day. QNT was a big mover today. All right, QNT was a good mover today. Of course, we've been in a bullish trend on QNT. Here we go, breaking above the initiator, getting Parallax and Wadatar confirmation, confirm, uh, excuse me, Wadatar explosion confirmation. You get a beautiful opportunity on the very next candle. You do close below the qualifying level there and off to the races you go. You even get a pullback to the baseline. So you could even have taken a reversal baseline bounce. Multiple, multiple opportunities. Uh, we do have Minx moving into the oversold territory. So I would be watching for an exit signal. Nothing confirmed yet. Nothing confirmed yet. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so yeah, uh, let me look at uh, let me look at let me look at junior analyst Jason's analysis here. So uh, classic Minx giving a take profit long signal on today's daily candle. So in his opinion, nothing to do here but take profit on a Q and T trade. Uh, so overall looking yeah exactly what i would what i would surmise with okay we had we had some good opportunities here uh let's look at quadrigo we do have some some tightness at yeah, 1.5 is good yeah nice accumulation area there's the break you get the water confirmation and then this candle or this candle uh for some nice pullbacks uh, but again nothing to do on q and t now definitely profit taking area A uh, challenged investor asks, how much of my portfolio is BTC spot long, including all crypto? I can tell you from my trading capital, my current split is 45% BTC and then the rest in 55% USD. That's the way that things have ended up playing out over the last few months as I've moved money over to Webull, as I've moved money over to Awanda to trade more spot Forex, to trade more CFDs and to trade more ETFs. Uh, the, the crypto that I have is not in USDT. Uh, except for about $10,000 that I have put into Tether so I can play around with USDTs with Bybit's USDT perpetual contract. Uh, insofar as my my long-term investment portfolio, it is heavily weighted in BTC. Heavily weighted in BTC. Overwhelmingly in BTC. All right. Um, next big mover of the day is NRG. I give a shout out to uh, Mr. Ether about Mr. NRG BTC over here. Been doing very well, trucking along on the daily. Uh, now, let's take a look at what we got over here. 
Uh, we have price breaking above the breaking Bitcoin initiator all the way down here at 16,790. A lot of opportunities for this one. All right, so we have, let's see, we have a potential fake out. Let's see, look at our first opportunity right here. Get an exit signal on the next candle. We get some entry here. We get some parallax confirmation. We're able to catch this wick. And then we just kind of hang out, let price come back down, largely stay out of this area. Here we go, breaking above the continuation filter. That is a failed attempt, but the very next candle, we get the opportunity to get back in, even if we wait for another WADA signal over here and we catch this last leg of the movement. So again, uh, potential, let's see here. Here, small loss, win, small loss, big win. All right, so system doing well on NRG BTC here for the daily little overextended now. Again, Minks moving into the oversold territory, so be looking for that cross under and the take profit long signal on NRG. And Bitcoin Diamond, another big mover of the day. I knew. I didn't know that Bitcoin Di I didn't know that Bitcoin Diamond was still a thing. Uh, beginning some nice pump action today, looking quite different from QNT or NRG with buying pressure getting BCD above the 13 exponential moving average on the daily and also above the 60 Hall MA. Uh, now, I'm not currently getting a long signal on BCD. I need to break above 77.46 to be looking to go long on BCD, but getting some interesting reversal signals right here, but Parallax is still a far way off. So uh, this looks like a lot of chop to me. I would be patient and pretty hesitant looking at this one on the daily. Definitely want to be calm and collected here. All right. Did I get free energy? Yeah, I got free energy. Rain, baby. Hey, Nigal, good to see you. All right, so what are the next things that I want to cover? All right, we've got a lot to cover today in today's crypto currently episode. A lot that I want to talk about, particularly when it comes to uh, the kind of disbursement checks, uh, the welfare checks. I mean, I'm sorry, the, the economic stimulus checks uh, that everybody's going to get here in the United States of America. We're going to be covering that and how... Uh, and how more decentralized payment networks, rather than the banking system, uh, could actually help get that money in the hands of individuals that need it uh, quicker than legacy financial systems. Uh, let's get rid of that brush because that annoys me. Sorry about that. All right. Uh, but first, uh, first, we're going to take a brief 45 seconds and hear from our friends over. Uh, let's see. Uh, today's uh, friend of the show is going to be Bybit. So we're going to check in with junior analyst Jason uh, and see what his attempts with Bybit look like. Don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back. Can't catch a break over on BitMEX with all the wicks? Try a better alternative at bybit.crackingcryptocurrency.com and rest easy for a change. All right, welcome to our Crypto Currently segment. In today's segment, we're going to be talking about Jack Dorsey and the Cash App. Now, Jack Dorsey is obviously the founder and CEO of Square, uh, and they are they're trying to extend a helping hand to the United States government, suggesting that the Square Cash App payment system uh, can step in to distribute the monster stimulus package more efficiently to the American population rather than really anything the United States government can provide or can harness in such a short period of time. Now, back on Friday, back on Friday, Dorsey responded in a tweet to a Cash App user here who tagged Dorsey with a suggestion for the payments app to be used in the distribution of the United States's forthcoming $2 trillion stimulus package, all right? Now, in his response, Dorsey did acknowledge that the American people need help immediately and that the technology exists to facilitate this distribution of relief funds to the greatest number of people today, even to those without bank accounts. He referred to Square, as well as many of their industry peers, as being able to get it done and implored the United States government to allow them to step in and provide the infrastructure necessary to get the job done. Now, shortly after this, 
CNN Business reported on an anonymous source who stated that representatives from both, yeah, of course I'm using a, uh, an ad blocker, get, get out of here, who stated that representatives from both Square's Cash App as well as the fellow payment platform Venmo reached out to the United States Treasury in order to discuss how they could assist in dispersing the funds that the American government wants to give to the American people. Some of them, right? Now, other industry experts uh, have also chimed in on the subject with Binance US CEO, Catherine Coley, for instance, pointing out how traditional means of government cheddar distribution means the stimulus money may not reach those who lack access to financial services. Now, in comments that Catherine made to Cointelegraph, she explained how the existing payment rails, such as getting a bank wire or getting mailed a check, is going to neglect those who either don't have access to bank accounts or who may be unable to actually visit their local brick and mortar banking branch in the middle of this particular crisis. Now, back on March 19th, another fintech expert, Jody Kelly, she's the CEO of the Electronic Transactions Association, and they represent the payment processing industry as a whole, wrote a letter directly to the White House warning the administration of the challenging impracticalities and risks associated with using existing banking means to distribute the stimulus to the American people. Now, Kelly also cited the fact that not many Americans the, excuse me. She cited the fact that there's a lot of Americans who do not actually have a bank account at a traditional financial institution and receiving their stimulus check would inevitably send them to an expensive cash checking service to obtain that money at an exorbitant interest rate. And who can say how much that's actually contributing to the economy? And she added that by utilizing electronic payment options, this will help keep Americans safe by reducing their exposure to physical cash or having them stand in line at a bank or check cashing service or ATM. Therefore, Digital distribution helps maintain the social distancing measures being recommended by authorities literally everywhere across the world. So the question is, what do you guys think? Is the government capable of getting the money to the people in a timely and organized manner? Or do you think the private industry, including the latest in fintech solutions like the Cash App, Let's let's you know we let's 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 start with the cash out. We'll get to Bitcoin later. Uh, do you think that this is going to be required to get the money out to everyone who needs it? As always, comments are always welcome in the comment section down below. And moving on to our second story, uh, you know, of course, uh, everywhere all over the world, from the Bahamas to Sweden to China, we already have a number of nations around the globe testing their own central bank digital currencies. This is a pet project of ours, a pet topic of ours that we cover all the time. And it seems that the French central bank is the latest getting ready to throw its hat into the CBDC ring with an official announcement concerning the launch of a CBDC program looking to experiment and test the integration of the next generation digital currency technology for their interbank settlement systems, right? Now, in a document published on March 27th by the Bank of France, outlined in that proposal is the new pilot project. And in that proposal, it invites potential participants to submit their applications for the adoption of a digital euro. In it, they state their aim is to explore potential CBDC opportunities for clearing and the settlement of tokenized financial assets. <clears throat> Back in November of 2019, the central bank's deputy governor spoke at the annual Capital Markets Technology and Innovation Conference in which he called on Europe to adopt DLT, di Distributed Ledger Technology, for payment systems in Europe. But in this latest announcement, the French central bank says it is not imposing any particular technology, blockchain, or otherwise to be used in the experimental new program. The bank has indicated it will shortlist a maximum of 10 CBDC-related applications by groups or individuals with bonus points to those offering unique innovations to the project. Now, applicants to the program must be European Union-based, and an application deadline is relatively soon, slated for May 15th, 2020. So let me break that down. The French central bank wants applications for novel solutions to a central bank digital currency doesn't have to be distributed ledger technology, blockchain based or anything that's currently being seen. They want innovative solutions, which means they might be looking to go in a completely different direction and they want answers. They want applications by May 15th. OK, May 15th. That's that's all that's 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 hardly less than two months away. 
and the central bank has scheduled to make its selection of approved applications by July 10th of 2020, the bank announced. Three main objectives to their new CBD system have been outlined, and the bank wants applications to identify benefits as well as potential risks to the following sectors. One, payments against financial instruments. Two, payments against other central banks' digital currency. And three, payments against digital assets. The central bank also clarified it will not be engaging in any new money creation during the course of the CBDC test program, as well as noting that it will be destroying the suitable amount in euros of any tokens created at the end of the accounting day on which payment was made. So according to them, they are looking for ways to settle securities and other digital currencies in their own unique novel system that may, that, 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 that you can clearly see is not going to be tied in to the other CBDCs that other countries or that other uh, governments are going to be running, right? So very interesting, very interesting, uh, very interesting tack here from the French government. Now, the Bank of France also noted, and again, sorry, just to cover that last part, seems like they're not going to be minting any new money with this. So they are attempting to say that they are not going to utilize this as a means of hyperinflating or inflating at all the currency and that they will just be using uh, this electronic system to denominate euros. Those euros will be pulled out of circulation and then uh, destroyed as they become tokenized assets, right? So it's uh, they're going to be usurping euros, tying them up essentially in whatever electronic payment system they have and destroying the physical euro notes or destroying them, removing them from circulation. So very, very interesting, not printing money out of thin air. This is a, a very different tack on this, a very different take than I've seen from other governments and projects. Now, the Bank of France also noted how the project is, of course, experimental and will not seek to apply or impose uh, what they want in a wider fashion to the greater Eurozone, just in France. Now, instead, these experiments, they warn, should be viewed as a contribution by the central bank when the time comes to enter a broader discussion within the euro system. This way, an informed decision can be made by all parties on whether or not to set up a CBDC. So, you know, honestly, it seems like France wanting to kind of get ahead of the game here, because if the Eurozone starts to suffer and face significant economic fallout from the on from, from what's currently happening around the world, if we get a massive uh, series of defaults that just spiral out of control, just like we did back in 2008, which is already beginning to some degree, uh, it's already underway, many would argue, uh, then they definitely want to be ahead of this with an alternative currency, you know, to be like, hey, Eurozone, step on in here. We've got the solution right here. Now, earlier this month, the French uh, markets regulator known as <laughs> I've got I know that I have French friends who watch. They're going to kill me for this. But uh, the Autorité des Marches Financières, go ahead, leave, leave death threats in the comment section down below, proposed the creation of a regulatory sandbox in order to, ex to allow the exploration of the potential benefits of security tokens within the European Union and what benefit they may hold. And now it seems they are moving swiftly toward the next stage of development on their path towards CBDC technology within the European Union. So again... Let me know if you're let me know your thoughts and opinions on this. Uh, we've been, you know, we've been talking about CBDCs. We've talked about the American uh, digital dollar. It's coming very soon to a Walmart near you, uh, to a FEMA camp near you. We've talked about uh, the, the European Union and now France in an interesting move, separating itself from the larger Eurozone discussion and trying to come out with their own uh, kind of cloaking this as, well, it's a contribution. Uh, it's really, I think, you trying to get ahead, trying to get ahead of the game. But let me know your guys' thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. With that being said, that being said, uh, let's hop back over to the live scene and take your questions for today's Q and answer segment. All right, so I answered Zuhair's question about the weekly Fisher Cross and how that is essentially utilizing a weekly baseline for, well, I mean, I'm assuming, uh, I'm not sure exactly where your, uh, the rest of your directional bias lies, the rest of your setup. Um,
Sure, a Depay guy asks, can I please walk through a quick example of using Wada Atar Explosion as both a confirmer and a volume indicator? Sure. Uh, so typically, this is going to be a couple of different ways of doing this, right? So it can, Wada Atar Explosion has two components, right? Very similar uh, to, uh, very not actually very similar to many, many, many indicators, but uh, it has a momentum component uh, and it also has a volatility component, right? Now, interestingly enough, its momentum component is tied to volume, right? It is delta, right? So it is not a direct measurement of volume, although it certainly could be. Uh, for example, uh, what one could do So you won't be able to do it with this. This is the public version of WADA. Uh, and the version of WADA uh, that is uh, actually better than the version, no, I don't want to say better, uh, but there's the version of WADA that's available in the strategy tester, right? That is a optimized version of WADA. Uh, and I am putting out WADA Atar Explosion Study version 2.0, which has all of the features in the strategy tester, uh, but also the ability to measure WADA uh, utilizing volume as a source. So that is going to be the truly best way to get a full bead. Now, it's going to look very different from the water based off of uh, uh, divergence or delta and momentum, right? So let's look at the two components of water tar explosion. One is momentum, and this is the green columns. Uh, and the explosion level is viewed as kind of like, you know, this is low momentum. So above this, uh, we have a nice strong signal. So Utilizing WADA as a confirmer is simply going to be, do we have a column above the explosion level? You can also say, do we have an uh, a WADA column above the dead zone is also another way to do it. Now, the other way to view WADA, to view it as a volatility filter, is to not plot uptrend and downtrend and to simply look at the explosion level. This is a measurement of volatility, right? This is related to the Bollinger Bands uh, and where the lower and upper band of the Bollinger bar Band are in relation to themselves multiplied by a factor, right? The factor is, uh, the, the that N number is the sensitivity number, right? Multiplied by that number. Um, so uh, when, the, when the colors turn yellow or when the explosion level begins to rise, you have expanding volatility, i.e. you have volatility confirmation, right? Uh, now, typically, if you're going to be using Watt as a volatility filter, you're going to want to be speeding it up a little bit, right? So, for example, this version of Watt, you can see that I actually have 10 and 24 as my links. It's a little bit, it's almost the same as the sped up settings, which was 10 and 20. I found over time that 10 and 24 actually tend to work a little bit better on the daily time frame. But, of course, you'll want to tune this to your time frame and, and your backtesting, right? Uh, anywhere, any, you know, those values anywhere from 20 to 40 on those tend to work fairly well. You do want your slow length to be at least twice as much as your fast length in general. Uh, so for confirmation, for using WADA as a confirmer, do you have a bar above the explosion level? Confirmation for your second, for your confirmer or for your, you know, or for your volatility filter. I've seen people use that for their volatility filter. Uh, and for a pure volatility filter, just as I cover in the PTP lecture, uh, water tar explosion separating is also a valid volatility filter, right? Volume weighted moving average is also one. Uh, ATR expansion or ATR moving average cross under is another one. All kinds of really, really good uh, volume and volatility filters out there uh, if you look for them, my friend. Uh, so there, that's the brief explanation. Good question, my friend. I highly appreciate that. Uh, with that being said, I think that pretty much covers everything. Uh, let's uh, let's toss some lemons out here to our friends over on DLive. Uh, Ethics, thanks so much for the follow today over there on DLive. And let's load up this lemons chest and distribute these rewards. Good if your name is Aaron A. Bright. You get your money first. They won't do it. The government has too many blockheads. Well, I wish they had too, they, I wish they had more blockheads. Blockchain heads, that is. By France coming up with a different system, they cannot help, help bail any other European country out or bail in. There you go. Uh, Greece tried that to a degree. It didn't work out too well for them. Robin from the hood. The pie guy. Ricky T. Val Cornick, Squeaky Tadpole. Big winners over there today on DLive. Thank you guys so much. Much love.
And I want to thank Payday5713. Thank you so much again for the bits, my friend. Lord Calder, thank you so much for the follow over there on Twitch. Who's buying BTC with their Trump bucks? This guy, that's who. Tezos USD. And did I look at BTC Weekly? I did not. All right, so on the weekly time frame, uh, we are still looking negative. We're not back quite yet in the shorting zone. Uh, Parallax is still bearish. We are still below the weekly baseline. Uh, we'd actually still need to close above 72.64 to be bullish on the weekly again. Um, excuse me, not even to be bullish on the weekly, but to have shorts invalidated on the weekly time frame. We haven't even gotten a weekly exit signal yet. So that is never good to see. Again, we can see that we lost the baseline. Oh, we lost the breaking Bitcoin initiator all the way over here back in July of 2019. We gained it briefly in January until we lost it here at the very beginning of March. In fact, the weekly presaging the sell off very well. This weekly close, EB initiator short, auditor explosion, rising volatility, and Parallax confirmation. Yeah. Got a long way to go. Tell you what, Minx on the weekly nailed it. Long and short. It wasn't always that way, agency. Heck, it's only been that way for a little bit. All European Union, all, all, all EU nations, I mean, less than two decades ago, used to issue their own currencies. Have we fallen so far? You think they forgot? Think they, they threw away all the printing presses? Tezos on the daily. Tezos on the daily is getting a Minx uh, exit short signal. Uh, but not uh, not bullish confirmation. This looks very much like Ethereum, man. This looks very much like Ethereum. It's not quite there yet. Uh, I need to close above 164.20, but par as I said, Parallax isn't there. Uh, question, would I always check the chart of the exchange I'm trading on, Binance, for example? Uh, listen, I think that you should check the chart of the cleanest data, right? Now, I tend to, as I said, yes, uh, it's particularly with like different contracts, I tend to always watch the chart that I'm trading on nine times out of 10. Uh, like for example, like I took a long on the spy, but I won't take a long on the e-mini futures. Um, uh, and as far as OKEX, I think OKEX is fine. I don't have any issues with them. They're one of the, the, the biggest exchanges. Uh, you know, I had a chance to sit down and talk with, uh, some of the guys from OKEX when I was in San Francisco last year. Uh, and from what I know about their platform, I don't have anything wrong with it. They got um, uh, OK Exchange, which is their United States branch. So you can trade on there. Um, I would be a little bit more biased to trade on Binance US personally. Um, they've, they're they pretty good. BAM Trading Services is a pretty good company. Um, as far as the, the direct exchange, uh, I think Binance is certainly winning out. They offer more products, but... Um, Yeah, I don't have anything against OKEX. I don't, I don't think they're shady or scammy. Uh, let's see here. Uh, as far as what chart on trading view would I use? Well, I mean, I'd have to use Binance. Yeah, for, for sure. For sure. If you were trading... Now, if you were trading their uh, futures contracts for Bitcoin, though, I would use, you know, BitMEX, Bybit. Pretty clean chart. I think the Bybit chart's cleaner, but Bybit chart's also a little different sometimes. Doesn't get as many wicks as the BitMEX chart.
Uh, Zuhair Nakfi, thank you so much, man, for the $20 tip. He says, I do use monthly, weekly as directional bias and use lower time frames for entries. It gives better entries compared to waiting for closures below, say, the daily baseline, if, say, shorting. Thoughts on monthly minx short signal with this strategy? Well, I certainly absolutely do agree that you will get, of course, earlier entries, right? You'll you'll pay you'll you'll pay a price for that though, and that's that's generally going to be that you are typically not as uh, not as right as often, right? And that's why I do what I do, right? Uh, the reason why I trade the way that I trade is because the the hit rate is worth it to me, right? Uh, I, I sacrifice I sacrifice the earlier entries for the consistency, right? Um, now again, I. Uh, at the end of the day, you're the one that has to trade your system. So you've done your back test and you'll know your results, you know, at the end of the day. All that really matters is, are you making money? And if you're making money, then what you're doing is clearly working. And I absolutely congratulate you on that. Uh, thoughts on the monthly minx short signal with this strategy? You know, I'm not a big fan of monthly time frame signals. I feel like I've broken trading view because I used to just be able to, to punch right in. <clears throat> now, having said that, uh, I want to I want to be clear here, right? Uh, a, I let's see, I've got smooth minks here, so let's get uh, let's get non smooth minks. Yeah, so that would be a monthly sell signal, of course. It's also violating the monthly level on my breaking Bitcoin initiator parallax flipped bearish back over here in November of 2019. The other thing, of course, that I think would agree with you uh, is going to be on the weekly time frame. This is something that I've talked about for a while is the uh, secondary and tertiary baseline cross under, right? Uh, this is going to be the 1355 uh, weekly moving average cross under. It happened over here on the 16th of March, and we've had a nice little pop back up to that area. Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, there is uh, so discretionarily, uh, if I were to look at the charts right now and just trade my feelings, uh, this is overall a chart that I want to be short on, right? Just like when I look at the SPY, right? But I didn't short the SPY. I had to go long on the SPY, right? Because that's what my daily system told me to do. I've been doing that for a long time and it's going to work out for me just fine. Um, but yeah, certainly something, you know, if you are trading more discretionarily, if you are trading more, um, you know, a little bit more as guided and guided by overall direction of things rather than trading objective signals like purely just objective signals like this thing fires and you act you know exactly how to act every single time because you just do this uh you know th the way that i've structured my trading system is i don't want to have to really think about things right like i know that might sound counterintuitive but the more that you have to puzzle out what exactly to do the more wrong you can be right more often right the more you can really get yourself into traps and the first three years of my life right the first not the first three years of my life, first three years of my life i did a lot of I did a lot of this but the first well probably you know maybe not just that right i probably did some more things now that i've raised kids like i realized like you know people people that don't have kids think that babies are just like like until you're like a teenager right no they they like run and talk and do stuff man they're pretty cool um on the uh uh, but the first three years of my trading life, right, I was pure discretion and I got myself absolutely wrecked. Uh, and so I really enjoy the way that I trade now where all, you know, I, I look at the charts, it takes me 30 minutes to run through things. I know exactly what I want to do. I execute and then I, I go live life, my friend. Actually, I spend most of my time mentoring people. So, um, so I think you've got some, but listen, having said that, I think that you've got some good I think that there's some good, um, good ideas. I'm liking what you're putting down. Um, I just want to make sure that I see you trade it objectively, right? You know, there's nothing wrong with looking for direction in different places, uh, but you also want to make sure that you're not looking for data that fits your bias, right? Good question, man. Thank you. Dent. The coin for dentists. I broke trading view. I used to be able to just like type the ticker that I wanted into the chart. I wonder what I did. Now I do have to click up here. Can somebody confirm that that is the case?
Dent, the coin for dentists. Dirty mouth? Clean it up by investing in the coin for dentists. Denticoin. Kid tested, mother approved. Uh, all right, so I would be directionally biased to the upside on Dent USDT, uh, but Bitcoin had a nice move into the upside, so most things are going to be biased to the upside uh, measured against uh, USD. I'm a little hesitant. As I said, I'm, I'm spot long on BTC, but I'm not at risk long, so I'd be a little cautious right now. Uh, same thing here with uh, Dent USD. Parallax isn't there, so for that reason, I'm going to have to stay out, and we're below the continuation filter. Now, getting a close above 1179, then I might be looking for a trade to the upside on Dent. Uh, but as of right now, we're just not there. Uh, and Crypto Da Vinci asking for one USDT. Yep, I certainly broke trading view. Again, anybody, anybody could tell me that that I'm not the only one. Uh, one USDT uh, looks like the exact same chart that I looked at with Dent, slightly different. Uh, above the baseline, uh, but Parallax is not there yet, so we don't have confirmation. Uh, again, uh, having a nice movement up here in the USD uh, measured against Tether, as did Bitcoin, because Bitcoin moved up measured against the dollar, which means a rising tide lifts all boats. But I don't see Harmony as independently bullish in and of itself. We need to close above 221 for that objective signal to go long. That'd be a continuation signal, right? Looking pretty good. Other than that, where was the last place that Reversal Minx called for a long right over here? Nailed it. Reversal short. Nailed it. All right. Looking good. Things are looking good. Four hour chart. I don't trade the four hour chart. How, how should I know? Um, four hour chart looks pretty good, actually. Uh, we crossed and closed. Uh, broke the continuation filter here. You had four hour long. You had a four hour long trade right here. Uh, but I assume that trade would already be over. Uh, because we would have already hit TP1 here, and we would have already hit our break-even stop loss. So four hour ha had a pro. Oh man, come on, man. come on, man! Yeah, four hour had a profitable trade, and that trade is over. So let's go back and look at historical stop loss and stop and target loss. Boom. Uh, we might not have actually hit that after all. Yeah, it looks like we did not. So close. Take profit one, 224895. Nope. 224 was the high of this candle. Yeah, maybe if you, yeah, you would have rounded up to 225 and we didn't hit 225. Missed it by one millisat. Micro BTC, sorry. One MBTC. Do I use dual confirmers? You know, we double pack up in here, Depay guy. All right, guys, with that being said. Thank you guys so much for joining me for another episode of Breaking Bitcoin Market Analysis. Uh, I hope you guys have an absolutely fantastic night. Of course, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to the channel if you guys would like to turn notifications on so you make sure to know when we're going live, which is every evening at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time until we're able to return to our regular broadcasting time. Make sure to follow us on YouTube. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> Twitter and Instagram, boom, where we do post content that you guys will not see anywhere else. And this is the last time that you guys are going to see it. The last possible opportunity to register for our four week trading competition, four weeks, one chart, BTC USDT, perpetual contract on Bybit. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell people you don't even like, I'm just kidding. Come out, trade with us. 
test off that new skill or show me up in the order book. Looking forward to it. Registration at bybitreg.crackingcryptocurrency.com and the leaderboard at bybitboard.crackingcryptocurrency.com. If you have not registered yet, Bybit is offering a $90 sign-on bonus for margin. bybit.crackingcryptocurrency.com. Link is in the description. All right. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, comments, concerns, sarcastic remarks, and or death threats, boom, put them down in the comment section. I'll do my best to get back to you within the next 24 to 48 hours for Cracking Cryptocurrency. I'm Justin Wise. You guys have a fantastic evening and trade safely.